Hey there, little cow pokes. It's me again. Uh, yeah, something bad happened yesterday, and it's like uh, sometimes you feel like um, if there is a divine entity, he doesn't like you. This is like one of those circumstances. Um, so I believe I mentioned on here that I was using other people's pictures to sell things on eBay. Now, uh, bear in mind, I am using a picture of a picture because it's a football card with a picture of a guy in it. It's not like I'm stealing somebody, a picture of somebody's child. You know, it's like I can see why they have these uh, laws against that. But apparently I broke a law and I just didn't break eBay policy. I broke a law because I was like looking into it. And I'm like, okay, this is against the law, apparently. It's called um, intellectual property theft to uh, take somebody's picture, post it as your own, which I really didn't do. I just posted it on an ad and didn't say that it was mine or was a stock photo. I just didn't say anything about it. But anyways, this is what happened. Now, the particular card that uh, caused me the problem is numbered uh, 6 of 10 is the card I have. This other card is numbered 2 of 10. Uh, so, so I, out of the, I've had 35 views on this ad before I sold it. 10 of the views were probably me, you know, checking in on it. So not very many people looked at this card because I only had it up for three days, but one guy looked at it. And he asked me a question about it. It's like, i seen that this other guy has that card with the same number. Uh, and he asked me some question I'm forgetting about. But I'm like, okay, I'm not admitting to anything in print. Because eBay reads everything. I will admit to it on YouTube. Because of reasons that will become clear later. But I, I'm not writing anything in print. Because I had a dispute with a guy on eBay over a guitar that he screwed me over on because he described it like completely inaccurately and I started swearing at him and eBay didn't look at the facts even though the guy admitted in our conversation that he lied to me he, they just looked at me be swearing and being impolite and then they sided with him and uh, I didn't get my money back so I was like well gotta be polite I guess and eBay reads all whatever you write on eBay if you use eBay uh, yeah Big Brother is watching so anyways I, I didn't write anything back to this guy who asked me this question this idiot who was apparently bored stupid or a troublemaker or a stop, uh, pot stir or just an asshole goes to the guy that's selling the card who I stole the picture from and rats me out to him so the guy uh sends me an email and says I see that you used my picture uh, what is the and there's been some concerns over it it's one guy there's been some concerns over it it's like um, uh, what is the number on your card it's like does it really matter what the number is I mean does it matter if you buy a 2 out of 10 or a 6 out of 10 I think the 10 part is the important part so you know and then he has his picture, and then he has a copy of my ad, even though my ad is expired. Now, this feels a little bit like extortion. But I'm like, I cannot afford to get kicked off of eBay, because I have thousands and thousands of dollars worth of cars to sell. And I don't sell anywhere but eBay. I'd have to go on to another format I'm not familiar with. And I have like uh, 2,000, not like exactly 2,663 feedbacks on eBay and 100% rating so you know that carries some weight to it when people could people look at that stuff and it's like uh, I can't afford to get kicked off eBay I'm like I'll probably you know just smooth this over with this guy cuz just by buying his fucking card so I bought the card 80 bucks and um, you know it's like, and I didn't say nothing to the dude. You know, I just bought the card. It's like, because I'm not admitting anything in print on eBay. This is something that I deserve a serious dunce cap for. Because, it, but the computer never works like this. eBay 
never works like this. It always gives you a fail safe. It always says, are you sure you want to do this? Are you sure you want, even if you're just leaving like a negative feedback on somebody, it's like, are you sure you want to do this? Are you sure? There's always like a second step to the initial click. So I, don't, I was curious of wanting to get more information. So it says, um, is there a problem with this uh, photo violating uh, eBay uh, regulations or something like that? It says, uh, click here. And so I click there. And instead of like giving me another page with some information, I just read it myself out. I just turned myself in. It's like, your complaint has been sent. And I'm like, how can I undo this? And I'm reading and I'm like, can't undo it, dude. You just turned yourself in. <laughs> I'm like, I can't believe I just did that. I just made this like much worse. Because now like eBay will be investigating it. I could get my account suspended, you know, because it's like one of the more serious violations you can do on eBay besides maybe try to sell drugs. And it's like, uh, yeah, I'm laughing about it because it's so stupid that I actually read it myself out after being very careful about not saying anything. I just told eBay that somebody's using pictures illegally, and it's me. So um, I'm like, okay, now now what do I do? And uh, I'm like, oh, I'll talk to the guy. You know, it's like uh, I should like prepare for this but I don't know just you know I, I'm spontaneous type of cat I wouldn't even plan on talking to y'all about it because it's kind of uh, it because it, it makes me look like an idiot maybe I don't know but anyways so, so I write the guy and I'm like I'm sorry you know if it caused you any inconvenience you know I'm a, I'm new a new seller on eBay I had no idea what I'm doing it's like I see people use stock photos all the time I had no idea that the numbers would be even be visible in the uh, photograph, and I um, uh, uh, just some more stuff, you know. And basically, like, I'm sorry, and like, I'm super polite, and I, like, like threw in some like kiss ass to eBay because I know they're gonna monitor that. And I'm like, you know, I had no intention of violating eBay's regulations. I'm just, you know. I read up on it, and that, like actual advice from a lawyer, and they were like, "Just your your best defense is like ignorance." And I'm like, "So, oh, I can do ignorance." <laughs> so I'm laughing about it, but I haven't really eaten a solid meal since this happened because this is like a serious thing. I mean, I have thousands and thousands of dollars worth of cards to sell. I have two auctions going off this weekend. If I get suspended from eBay. I got a serious fucking problem and once you get suspended it's like you have to talk to a bunch of eBay re I read up on it of course you have to talk to a bunch of eBay representatives plead your case you know and it's like it's not just the eBay violation it's the problem it's an actually considered a criminal act in the social media age like because I guess people um, steal people's Facebook photos and people are dumb enough to post pictures of their kids on the internet and stuff like that but I mean this is just a damn football card it's a picture of a guy in a football uniform uh, that it's a picture of a picture so it's a, why is this a big deal so the guy wrote me back and he said it really wasn't even that big a deal to me you know or whatever but I'm not sure what will come of it if anything will come of it or or what you know but it's like it's got me stressed out yesterday I actually took I just took three volume, which is my normal day, but I took two at once. I was only planning on taking two volume yesterday, but after I did all that shit, I took two at once. And uh, it took me a while to have an appetite to eat. Um, and I haven't eaten anything today because, like, CRPS, if you get emotionally upset, you get physically sick, as I may have mentioned a few times on here. So it's like, but I'm going to get that guy back. Cause that guy is just a meddlesome a-hole that did that. I know who did it. I know a way to get him back if I'm not kicked off the eBay. And I'm going to do it. And, uh, you know, it's pretty basic. I mean, he won't be watching this anyway, so I'll tell you how I do it. They sell on eBay. They have only 58 sales. Uh, I am going to trash 
their feedback rating by buying like three or four things off from small ticket items and then giving them negatives on all of them and then their feedback rating will drop from 100 to like in the 80s or in the 70s I'm not going to do the math and they're going to have to sell a lot of shit to get that eBay uh, rating back up to a reasonable level and I feel like they deserve that shit because why are why do you even care why are you ratting me out to somebody what difference does it make I mean you know the, the only thing the guy the guy that actually uh, owned the picture uh, said was I guess the guy wanted a card with uh, number two not a number six on it you know, he couldn't figure it out either in other words he's like I don't understand what's going on here I understand exactly what's going on here there's certain people in the world that are fucking troublemakers and just want to cause problems where there are no problems the sale of my card and taking a guy's picture did not affect that guy at all uh, first of all that guy did not have a limited time auction on his sale so we weren't competing with each other because he had an unlimited time limit I just had a three-day auction my card is gone so it's like uh, it's not gonna affect that guy at all you know so it's not like we were both like fighting each other in this for the same time frame and the guy wasn't even aware of it and uh, yeah I mean the fact that I turned myself in, though, I was like, oh, man, are you, you're kidding me. The computer never works this way. The computer always asks you, are you sure you want to delete this? Are you sure you want to do this? And eBay is the same way. Are you sure? Are you sure? You know, click OK to continue. There's always, like, a second screen. You don't click on something like that, and then it automatically does it. You know, it gives you that, that fail safe that um, uh, you might have clicked on this by mistake kind of thing. Are you sure you want to delete these files? Type of thing. And, um, yeah. So, but yeah, that's like, like, I'm really upset now. I'm actually thinking about canceling my uh, doc or rescheduling, rather, my doctor's appointment on Monday because I'm sick as hell because the CR CRPS is just, take just a weird disease. If I get upset, you know, that's why I'm terrified of my family. Is If I get upset, I get sick. And I'll be sick for a couple of days. Now, it might be better by Monday. I probably will be. I don't know. But, you know, what difference does it make? You know, it's like I haven't been taking much in the way in the run anyway. And um, they'll give me more time to try to unstress myself. You know, it's like it's liberating, actually, that I can reschedule an appointment and, uh, you know, go another time. It's like it's not even mandatory that I have to go to this particular doctor I have to have a primary caregiver um, because I think my I think care source frowns on it but they really can't do anything about it of course you know I, I might have to deal with um, flus or some kind of illnesses or some kind of sicknesses and where do, who do I go to I can't go to a psychiatric news news Freudian slip, perhaps. I can't go to a psychiatric nurse. It's just the teeth thing. Uh, if I got the flu type B, I can ask him for some uh, Tamiflu. I don't think it works that way. But as far as like, you know, he takes care of the volume side of thing, of uh, things, which I have to call him tomorrow. So you know, tomorrow's another day I got to deal with today, and uh, I got to figure out if I can eat or not. Um, my stomach hates me. Uh, but I'm just like, I've explained it before, but autonomic system is connected to your emotional centers in your brain. So you can actually, I actually get sick physically if I get upset emotionally. And uh, that is why, like, uh, for instance, that thing with my sister, like, made me sick for a very long time. You know, like, uh. something like this you know I might be better tonight it's like something like um, I think I actually have a video on here of like my brother was being a dick to me the night be like literally like 10 hours before I had to go in and get a radioactive isotope um, injected into me and have like a six hour test 
which wasn't even necessary anyway. And but the point is, is like he made me upset because he's like acting like an asshole to me and not being supportive. And uh, so I got sick. And I mean, sometimes I'm sick for like 24 hours. Sometimes it'll be like 48 hours. I'll, I'll, I'll just like feel awful. Um, that's why I, I try to keep calm and on an even keel. And I seem like even Steven on here is like that's just the way I gotta be. Because if I get upset, you know, if I get too mad about things, that's why this place has been a disaster for me. I'm sorry about that weird. Ah, ba -da, ba -da, cadence I, I got in there that's why this place has been a fucking disaster for me you know is because it's been nothing but emotional upset in this place for years it's one damn thing or another it's been kind of stable now the only thing I really have to deal with is Stampy you know but uh, I've had crack dealers and domestic violence and uh, meth operations and all this like upsetting stuff to deal with and you know correspondingly my health is that's why you know I try not to think about my landlord too much because uh, those thoughts never end well um, and why we aren't, aren't ever gonna like he, he, I'm thinking I was thinking last night because I was like well my rent's coming up in November I should just pay my rent for the whole winter I wonder if he's gonna try to drop off Christmas cookies again you know he's a delusional dude it's like like uh, it's just ignore him or like uh, tell him I got diabetes or something or can't you know I, mean, I don't know <laughs> I just had this dumb that dumb thought it's like I oh, wonder if this guy's gonna try to actually drop off Christmas cookies but I was upset enough like last night I felt um, this that's the sting of being alone is like when you're emotionally upset you want somebody to talk to you know and I'm like who can I talk to well I can't call that guy in Florida that never upsets me because he's got to go to bed at like 8 o'clock at night and uh, he's probably eating dinner right now so I can't call him he's about the only safe guy I can call uh, my best friend is I think on some kind of like family get together retreat thing and I don't really want to bother him with this nonsense you know, because it'll just sound stupid to him. Um, you know, he'll be sympathetic and nice about it, but if you think about it, what I said at the beginning of this is just stupid. The whole thing is just stupid nonsense caused by some guy for no reason. And then me getting all upset about it because I can get suspended from eBay permanently. Um, and then I like, well, I could call, nope, can't call that person. And then I was like, eh, I haven't talked to, uh, uh, shit. I haven't talked to... I just don't like talking bad about people, you know. But I haven't talked to this guy for a while, you know. It's like, I've been trying to call him. Um, I can't get... I haven't able to get a hold of him. I'll call him, you know. So I get on the phone and I'm like, oh, it's, it's been a while. I thought I'd give you a call. And I was like, uh, yeah, I could use a little emotional support right now. And he was like, yeah. So he just basically listens to, it's like talking to a wall, you know, he just listens to you talk until you're done and then we talk about something else. There's no concern expressed or like, you know, questions asked. He's just like eating potato chips and watching TV. You know, that's the image I got in my head. Or like uh, playing video games, you know, it's like, he's waiting for the noise to stop. It, it's like... He, people I, I find this anyway it's like when you're talking to somebody like my aid worker comes in here and she says she's got a heart thing they people like to be asked questions about their problems they like somebody to show an interest now if that other person happens to be a family member or somebody that you've known your whole life it's kind of like expected like for them to express concern or be like oh that's terrible that sucks I wonder why that guy did that he's an asshole do the whole thing where like uh, you know, they're on your side, and the other person is the bad person, or just anything. I'll take anything. Okay, I'll take bread and water. I'm hungry. I need, I need a little something. Um, nothing. You know, so we have our usual conversation, you know, which is, I enjoy those conversations. Uh, but that's a, 
I had cut him off. He hadn't talked to anybody for a while either, so I had cut him off. And, uh, you know, I think um, he would have went on for some time after that. Um, but, yeah, that's when you feel alone the most. It's like when you're upset like that, you just want to, like, have somebody, like, either side with you and be like, God, I, other you guys are a jerk. Or um, ask some questions about it. And, to, or tell you it's going to be all right, even if, even if who the hell knows how this is going to go, or anything, you know, just not stony silence, you know, so you feel like you're talking to a wall, describing the whole thing to him, you know, uh, you get nothing, and, um, in, in fairness to him, I don't, know if I gave him like appropriate pauses like for him to ask questions or whatever I just told him the story and the stupid thing that I did and um but then like there's just nothing and I said so that's the story you know then he says nothing and I'm like well how have you been doing and then we talk about you know his issues <laughs> and then I ask him questions about his issues and uh, how he's been doing so yeah but yeah it, it's probably not a big deal probably nothing will come of it but it's just you know I didn't know it was an actual crime I just thought it was like something that eBay frowned upon or so it's something that's like morally ambiguous you know and it's not like I I haven't gotten any feedback from any of the uh cards that I had shipped. I, one guy got got a delivery. At least one of my items got delivery, but I don't know if any of the other ones got delivered. But I haven't got any feedback from any of the buyers who were looking at pictures. And, you know, they just talk to me. I can either send them more cards or they can get their money back or whatever. It doesn't seem like... The whole thing seems stupid to me. So I could definitely understand stealing pictures of people. Actual live living people. These are actual live living people, but they're already public fi figures. They're already like uh, famous, and it's not a picture like that somebody took, you know, like a selfie of themselves and put on their Facebook page or of their kid. It's a picture of a guy in a football uniform, and there's thousands of them. In this in this case, only ten, but in other cases, there's like thousands of them. So it's and they're circulating around. Anyway, so I don't, I don't see what the big deal is. I don't know if eBay will make a big deal about it. I have a feeling that if I wouldn't have accidentally told on myself, and, you know, I bought, the, I paid the guy money. And I'm like, it felt like he was extorting me a little bit. You know, it's like, why are you even confronting me with this? But he's like, basically, he put a picture, he attached a picture of my ad. And his ad, and it was like, I got you. And it was like, uh, you used, I forget the phrase again, but it was basically like, you used my picture. There's been some concerns over it. And then he asked some uh, banal question like, uh, what is the actual number on your card? You know, and it's like, to get a response. And I'm like, well, my response will be, here's some money, man. Just leave it alone. You know, you got your card sold. So obviously I'm not interfering with the, your sales later, but then I had to go tell on myself on top of it. It was just, it never, nothing ever works like that though. Where like, you know, you click on a button and it doesn't say like, you gotta, you go through like PayPal, you gotta click on a button to get your funds transferred to your own bank. You, to put stuff in your own pocket, you have to click on things like, like four different times, you know, and like. Uh, like you use a computer so you know what I'm talking about I'm just belaboring the point as always anyways um, yeah so I'm just kind of sitting around I haven't called the agency I don't really I just feel awful um, to find out when they're gonna get here but I'm just gonna send the aid worker to the laundromat I could I don't know what I do with my uh, dirty clothes though so nice grab some towels and a couple of shorts that I found and um, just you know go go do make your living 
get out of my house type of thing, leave me alone. I'm kind of just waiting on her. Uh, but they show up at any old time, so it's not, like I've said, it's not a tightly run ship. But, uh, yeah. It's got a bellyache that won't quit. And, um, yeah. And I actually am thinking about rescheduling the doctor's appointment and asking if that's a problem, you know. Just because uh, I feel like my stress level is too high. I mean, I will pay that guy back for this. And, uh, he won't know it's what. He won't remember me or what it's over. And I've already, like, confessed to eBay. eBay's already aware of my crime, so he got nothing on me. Uh, that's one thing about it. So when I trash his feedback, um, yeah. There ain't nothing you can do about it. So, but man, you shouldn't go around making trouble for people. It's none of his business. Doesn't matter anyway, and it's none of his business. You know, it's the business of that guy. But he asked me, he noticed the disparity that there can't be two of the same card because it's numbered and they both have the number two on them. And then he asked me first, and then he went to the guy and narked me out to the guy. I was like, okay, we made you the card police, you know. And, uh, how is this affecting your life in any way? And like I said, dude, I'm being redundant, but like I said, the guy was confused too. The guy whose picture I stole was confused about it too. But the good news is, is like I have a camera. I have this phone up and running and the camera works on it, so I won't ever have to worry about that again. And I only did that because this government phone takes really shitty pictures. I wonder if there's some way I could demonstrate that to you, but basically, you look at the picture, and, like, okay, you see what's on the screen, you push the button, and then you get half of what's on the screen. So how are you supposed to take a picture like that, you know? It's like, uh, like I said, I was, like, pulling it back, and I was, like, exper experimenting with different angles trying to take a picture, and I'm like, this, I've never seen this in, like, an old-fashioned camera, any kind of camera. What you see is what you get. What you see in the little viewfinder is what you take a picture of, but not with that evil thing. Uh, so, that's really what caused the whole problem is that government phone, because I was trying to take pictures of the initial cards that I was selling, and had no luck at it, so I was like, eh, let's take some pictures of the same cards off of other people's ads. I know it's kind of suspect, and eBay probably went through. I didn't know it was a fucking actual crime. It's literally called uh, intellectual property theft. Apparently, it's an intellectual act to take a photograph of something. You know, it's like I'm not stealing a piece of art. <laughs> Just so you know, don't do that. You know, don't ever do that. That's it's actually a crime. Now I can't see like uh, how I could get prosecuted for it, or anything like that, or why anybody would even bother. The guy himself don't even care. Who's, he told me this morning he don't care. It's like it's not a big deal to me. You know. Uh, so, yeah. I wonder what you, what they would do. They'd probably like fine you some money. I'll have to look look up the penalty for that. Uh, what that could, that could, that could cover like a broad scope of anything like intellectual property theft. You know, like the stealing, plagiarizing somebody's work. Who's an author or a columnist or a writer? Um, you know to what um, Led Zeppelin did to Willie Dixon and didn't give him any credit so Willie Dixon sued Led Zeppelin and Led Zeppelin settled with him out of court you know like I'm thinking it's all like set up for the realm of art you know not for the realm of taking pictures of pictures of football cards so yeah.
Yeah, this is like just how CRPS is. It's weird. It makes you sick when you get upset. I was very upset yesterday because like it's still a real possibility that I could get suspended off of eBay for violating their now that I turned myself in especially. Um I was like very upset about it. It's like I was very mad at the dude that uh, caused me the trouble. Because uh, I know it's just one guy. Uh, and then, like, at first the guy was very vague and he said, like, there's been some concerns expressed. And then, when, in the second email, he wrote me, he said, I guess the guy. So, I, of course, I already knew it was just one guy. He said, apparently, the guy wanted uh, to buy a card with a certain number on it, you know, it's like, no, the guy's just a dick, just a troublemaker, but, yeah, it's a dumb life, isn't it, life is stupid, uh, yeah, something like that can, like, um, cause you to not be able to eat for, like, 24 hours, make you sick, and then CRPS is very weird, though, it's very, very weird disease. It's something I've never been able to, like, convince my family of, you know. That, uh, like, look, man, if you, like, fuck with my head emotionally, you're fucking with my body physically. You're gonna make me sick. You know, it's like giving me the flu. You know, it's like I've tried to explain it to him, like, many times. But, uh, yeah, they're gonna do what they're gonna do. And, um, you know, I explained that to my sister way before. You know, way before, like, uh, we parted ways, and, um, she just kept acting however she wanted to act, you know, it's like, I'm not asking for much, just, like, I'm asking you to be, like, a whole different person, and so it's, like, just, I don't know, just understand, it's kind of like, you know, when you're walking around somebody that's got like a uh, injured foot, you're a little more careful than you're like walking around somebody that's got two healthy feet. Just, you know, just be a little more careful um, about uh, the things you say and do. Well, you don't want to hang up on somebody when they're waiting for a diagnosis to see if they have rheumatoid arthritis. And I'm not asking for a whole lot. I'm not asking you to be a different person. Ask you just to be a little more, be a little careful, you know. And um, the benzo thing, like heightened all that too, because you get benzo sensitivity, like emotionally, which you know about. And so, I'm like, oh, yeah, yeah, that just made, that that made made things even worse. And um, yeah, I'm not, I'm not a lucky person, man. It's like probably 25 people look at this ad I had up and one of them just decided to go behind my back and arc me out to the guy and cause me all that trouble. Out of 25 people, you know, I could understand if there was like hundreds of views out of it, but usually you can you can throw a rock in a crowd and uh, yeah, you're not going to hit an asshole. <laughs> usually. I don't know why. I don't have, I wanted a quick analogy that would come to me that made sense, but that's all I got. I mean, usually, you take 25 people, and you throw a rock, and you're going to hit somebody that's not going to be the type of person that just starts trouble for absolutely nothing but their own entertainment, and just because they're bored, um, because that had to be the only reason why the dude, you know, did that. Or maybe he got mad because I didn't answer his question. But I wasn't going to conf confess to any mal malfeasance in print. But a lot of questions go unanswered on eBay because I don't know people have lives. So they don't get back to you right away. You know? You know there's actually people that have jobs and stuff that sell stuff on eBay as well. Or, or like buy stuff on eBay. And you can't expect like an immediate response out, out of anybody anyway. This guy didn't hear from me like within 24 hours, so he just decided to knock me out. It's just weird. It's like, I, don't, I never understand people. I do understand that this is the kind of thing that's bound to happen to me because, um, yeah, this is the pattern of my life. It's like, I don't have good luck. 
uh, I understand this. And hopefully you'll feel better tomorrow and, you know, I'm leaning towards, like, uh, rescheduling that appointment. Um, just because, like, my stress level is too high and uh, I got this new thing to deal with. Uh, that to worry about, which is, since I have generalized anxiety, it's like, you know, I know it's not the end of the world that I'm going to have to sit on these mountains of cards and, like, I'll lose. It's a timing thing where you have to sell at certain times, so, like, you know, maybe get reinstated at the, after the cards are, like, lower in value or whatever. It's not, not the end of the world, I mean. And I know that. It's just like, uh, it's not like I'm going to go hungry or like uh, get thrown out of my house or anything like that or I'm not going to have enough money to live on or exist on. It's, yeah. But it's just, I can't help the way I am, I guess, with the anxiety thing and uh, the emotional rawness and all that. It comes along with um, having a pain-generating disease and uh, being benzo-dependent, which is part of the part of the package but uh yeah yeah i don't really have nothing else to uh, talk about um just weird you know it's just totally unexpected I, I wasn't planning on just keep stealing people's pictures i just did it because i didn't have a camera <laughs> now i got a camera it's like yeah it's like i, I don't even yeah, I don't even know what to say about it. It's just so dumb. It's like, uh, yeah, okay, there's people in the streets, like, burning down buildings and shooting each other. And, like, why are you dicking around on eBay making trouble for people? It's like, why is this a big deal? Like, like, uh, there's actually National Guards actually being called out, I think, in Kenosha. Um, is that in Washington? I don't know. The name of the place is Kenosha. Um, there's like civil unrest, uh, the COVID thing going on, unemployment, all this madness going on, and like, uh, people are worried about somebody copying a picture of a card, which is a picture of a picture. It's not even just a straight up picture. It's a picture of a card, which is a guy's picture. <laughs> so, yeah. Um... Yeah. I don't know. I, I, I hate being like this. I haven't taken any volume today. Just because, I don't know, I don't want to. Um, I probably should. I just don't want to. It's, um, I, I got my glasses off, but I can see at 3. So it's past 3 o'clock in the afternoon. I've been awake since 10 o'clock in the morning since I had trouble going to sleep last night because of, uh, you know, what I was talking about earlier. So I woke up late, and uh, the last volume I took was sometime in the evening last night. Don't know, don't remember. Uh, Oh, I think that's what I did, man. Like I said, I'm always honest about my drug use on here. It's like, I think I actually took four volume yesterday and said three. Now that I'm thinking about it because I uh, took one towards morning. That bullshit happened and I took two because I was all like worked up and upset and angry. And uh, I don't have really have anybody to talk me down. And then like I couldn't go to sleep. So I took one like 2 a.m something like that I'm like uh, I took melatonin and I took uh, uh, that fourth volume so I really don't need that. I guess really probably about due for it because it's like 12 hours technically speaking I can just play it by ear but technically speaking I'm supposed to take it every eight hours um, if it's three times a day um, but I don't go by that. Uh, I'm a firm believer in like um, 
stockpiling and taking as little as you can get away with. So, you know, I gotta write down some things like who I gotta call tomorrow because I gotta call. I think I'm gonna call the doctor's office at least and see about rescheduling my appointment and then call transportation service and tell them that I'm not gonna go. And I gotta call my psychiatric nurse and tell them that I need a refill on these pills. Over here, why are those stupid things? I don't know. Usually they are hanging around here somewhere, but there's, I was just gonna show you, I need a refill, there's like 40 in there or something like that. Uh, but always stockpile, never trust the medical community. I mean, even even now, you know, no trust. There's no trust between me and the uh, medical community that could ever develop. That relationship is as fractured as the relationship with me, me and my landlord. There's and there ain't no fixing it. Uh, so, yeah, the next I have to call because my next appointment with the guy is on the 15th. So you know, obviously I have enough pills to make it to the 15th, but I want to get as many pills as possible to stockpile in case, like I don't know, this guy murdered somebody and gets caught for murder, or whatever. Um, and then then I got no doctor, I got no psychiatric nurse to prescribe me the shit. Um, because as we know, like there's not many people I think that can say that they've at one of their doctors they're was uh, murdered and the other doctor is on trial for uh, raping an 11 year old so I kind of feel justified in saying that I'm unlucky you know as far as like uh, yeah, in general um, yeah but I, was, I, just, I should do that, you know, since I'm not feeling well and my head's a bit messed up. Is uh, write a list. Like, I did good the other day, like, making, the, making contact in the doctor's office, asking when the appointment was, making calls, doing, staying on top of shit, getting everything done, getting all my auctions mailed, you know, checking all the boxes on the list. I didn't need a list, but I need to write a list. Uh, for tomorrow morning and do that shit first thing in the morning I need to make sure I go to sleep tonight and uh, hopefully I will be able to eat I get new food tomorrow I have uh, some food here left over I'm not like run short as I was last week and um, yeah as far as like the neurotic thing and like uh, get wanting to get that doctor's appointment in so I can get neurotic or whatever it's like eh, I'm, not, I'm not really worried about that you know um, I don't know just not worried about it running out of neurotic is not like running out of a benzo if they don't they're um, uh, non physical dependence type of substance even though they've been put on the schedule like I said it's because they hang around with the bad crowd because they're a potentiator they intensify the effect of benzodiazepines and opiates which are on the schedule so they are now a scheduled substance and this is a recent development within the last six months that they have been put on the schedule um, of uh, naughty naughty nasty drugs so uh, taking that into consideration there's no guarantee that the guy would prescribe the crap for me anyway and uh, I was getting by without taking it when I was exercising and lifting weights and being more active so you know I have hopes in that regard of getting back and doing that and uh, I just had a really bad day yesterday and, but like to top it all off, like, did not throw my cat out. He missed the litter box by a mile. This whole place was reeking so bad. He's the foulest creature imaginable. And it's like, uh, so I end my day by having to clean up sh cat shit. And, uh, literally cleaned it up, 
and the smell just did not leave because this is just a big hallway except for this bedroom it's like I got the big room I got the kitchen area and then it runs back past the kitchen area to a bathroom so it's just a big hallway so the stench did not leave and uh, he don't want to seem to want to leave the house I'm kind of questioning his overall all health and uh, I threw him out last night though uh, he didn't really want to go but it's not cold yet I won't do that in the winter time since like I said he's showing no signs of age but I was like yeah this is a perfect perfect topper to this day is a uh, cat utterly missing the litter box and like I opened the bedroom door and come out and I went oh my god what did you do you know um, I'm sorry about that if you make a weird noise uh, yeah, this is just, this is just some CRP, CRPS related bullshit when I get upset. And, uh, it's got nothing really to do with, uh, benzodiazepines. I don't, yeah, I, just, I just get like this. Yeah, it's one of the reasons why I like, I'm cautious with getting involved with people on the internet. Like, uh, sometimes people would want to correspond with me or talk to me on the phone or whatever. And it's like, yeah, I've had a couple of bad instances of that where I'm like, okay. Yeah, I remember talking to this one woman in an email and she just turned and evil on me. And was like, uh, just, I don't know, yelling at me basically in an email. And I'm like, oh, that's the end of that. But, uh. It was upsetting. Um, that was during my Xanax days too. You know, I was much more fragile and emotionally raw. And it made me sick for like 24 hours. And um, so we generally don't like to do that. I feel like I give enough. Like I'm here. If you want to see me or talk to me or write me or whatever, I'm here. It's, that should be enough. You know, I'm not looking to, you know, I got the fear of intimacy thing anyway, but even still, I'm not looking to, uh, I don't know, looking for anything other than, like, you want to talk to me, talk to me in the comments, or if you want to hear, hear what I have to say, I mean, all the stuff that I talk about, it comes from, you know, comes from the heart. I didn't want to say that phrase, but I mean, seriously, I mean, um, I would be far more interesting probably if I if I embellished and made up stories and he didn't tell you the truth or whatever but that's like one thing you will get out of me is you will get the truth you know it's like uh, I feel like it's enough you know to I'm on here I'm being me you know and uh, that should that should be good enough for people. It's like you know, I'll, I'll just train wreck that whole thing before it goes anywhere else. And I'm start on something else because um, I am just killing time. I told my story that I had to tell, which is. The funny thing of me ratting on my own self it's like you just I, I just can't believe that there's no fail safe for that there's no like an okay yes a no box an okay a cancel box I mean that's generally how the computer works and I already told my story so now you know if you haven't clicked off of this already now is the killing time portion of our program people uh, let's see what can I talk about oh man yeah, well, um, I don't know, like, if I reschedule my doctor's appointment, if, I, like, I wasn't scheduled to see this doctor, I was scheduled to see, like, a doctor, probably, like, a practitioner, or somebody that works with a doctor, you know, so I don't know if, like, I'll, if I reschedule, I'll get to see the actual doctor, you know, it's like, a, I don't know what the deal is, or how this office works 
I know it's right down the road. It's not too far from here. I don't know about you, but I hate going into a place for the first time and filling out paperwork. Man, I hate paperwork. I hate where they ask me all the questions about all my dead relations and what diseases they had and what runs in the family and God forbid if I have to go into my uh, medical history. So usually I don't fill out stuff or I lie on the forms or, you know, whatever. Um, I don't ever lie, of course, about medications that I take or anything like that. Or uh, that would be really stupid. Don't ever do that. I mean, I, I just lie about my medical history because, like, why would they need to know? Sometimes, and I think this is the most stupid thing ever, uh, sometimes they will ask me exactly what type of tumor I had in 1984. Like, I would know that because it was like, you know, it's not enough that they, I tell them it's a benign tumor. They want to know the scientific Latin name for it. Like, um, yeah, that tumor when in, it's up in the uh, uh, tumor heaven right now. It's gone. As of 1980, it's, it's 1984 when I had that thing pulled out. You know, how many years is that? Let me do some quick stupid math in my head. 36 years. I bet you that's spot on. 36 years ago. And I'm going to remember the Latin name for the tumor that I had pulled out of me when I was 16 years old. They always ask, always ask me that. And I always like, yeah, it's like this is where I bite back down on the sarcasm. It's like, yeah, I got like a commemorative plaque on the wall of that tumor. You know, that's a, it's like, no, that's just like, what does that have to do with now? You know, nothing. It's just some random detail they want to know. Like, how is that's what I had to ask him. It's like, how would that, just out of, you know, just be polite about it. Just, just out of random curiosity. I mean, um, does it really make a difference what kind of benign tumor it is? I mean, how is that a, you know, basically a polite way of saying, why are you asking me this question? But sometimes, obviously, words do not come to me in a uh, mm, polite fashion. In this, uh, it's hard when you're being direct not to seem like you're being an asshole, in other words. It's like, I'm not being a smart ass or an asshole. I'm just asking. The question I want to ask is, well, why would you need to know that? It's like, what is the significance? How is that going to help me now? It's like, how is that going to help you treat me? I mean, why do you want to know that? Like, yeah. So I think that's... Uh, so basically, when I fill out my forms, I'm like, I get the bare bones things, you know. If it's um, going to be my primary caregiver, I, of course, have to bring up CRPS, which I, that's the thing I lie about the most when I go to places that I just don't tell people about it because they don't know about it anyway. It's a fairly rare disease, so, uh, yeah. My dentist I've been going to for years uh, doesn't know that I have that. I never put it on the forms. I don't think she knows that I have a heart condition even. Uh, like I don't see where she needs to know that either. And uh, yeah, so I just lie on forms. So I just got done saying that I'm honest and everything. I'm honest with not on medical forms. That just complicates matters. You know, I have to explain to uh, uh, medical people my medical problems. You know, and it's like, it also makes them less willing to treat you. I think, because I think that's why my need to not get operated on is because, like, look, you are a bad, like I've said, you're a bad credit risk. You got a heart problem. You're not exactly young. And you got some freaky, weird neurological disease. And I do not feel like taking an L here because uh, my medical malpractice insurance is high enough and if you got all these problems there's more of a chance that I could uh, the surgery will not go well and I will have to deal with some sort of lawsuit from you that's what I feel is going on behind the scenes you know I could be totally wrong but it's just uh, 
There's got to be some reason why I've had a bad knee for five years and have sought medical treatment for it and nothing has been done for it except for one procedure where they tried to drain something that had already burst by sticking a tube in my knee. That's it. And I can't get an orthopedic surgeon to uh, do anything with it. Um, the people that did that, that wasn't even like an ortho orthopedic surgeon. I had that done, I think, in Altman Hospital's um, radiology department, that particular procedure. Yeah. So I don't know who ordered that or who had that done. Uh, their idea was to drain it, and I was like, well, you know, it's just sticking a tube in my knee and draining my knee and then I, I have a good knee and if it comes back like I said like Jason Voorhees uh, and I go and get it drained and I just have to do it like every few years every time it's a problem I'm like at least that's something you know but it really don't remember anything working on it even when it burst I think it still hurt and then like uh, they said there was a blood clot in there though that it formed and um, the only thing that works is getting shot up with uh, cortisone. That only works for a little while. It makes your knee feel better. That's uh, also cortisone is not something that you want to take over extended period periods of time. It's the reason why Sandy Koufax, the pitcher, retired early is because he said in his press conference, he said, "I don't know what having seven cortisone shots a day does to you." Uh, in the long term, but uh, like I want to be able to hold my grandkids because uh, he every time he pitched, he's a lefty. Every time he pitched, he said it felt like his arm was going to fall off, and then he was sticking his arm in ice buckets and uh, ice barrels, and you know that he was a mess. Like, and then I, everybody was mad that he retired early. Now a lot more athletes are doing that though. Cause there's, you know, back then, he, even Sandy freaking Koufax was not making that much money. Uh, he made probably more money off of like commercials or brief, horrendous broadcasting career. They still had like uh, the plantation system for pro athletes. I think I'm almost positive he was pre free agency where they started to make the big dollars. So nowadays, you got the guys making the big dollars and they'll walk off. They'll do the Sandy Koufax routine and quit after a few years, you know, because, hey, I got millions and millions of dollars, and I, you know, this football stuff, uh, I've seen old football players and the way they walk, you know, uh, it's not a pretty sight, so I'm going to get out of here with my health and my millions, and uh, sorry fans, but I'm gone. There was a guy named Megatron that played for the Lions that uh, did that and he quit like a he quit in his prime more or less but uh, his name wasn't Megatron it was Calvin Johnson of course but they called it Megatron because he was just a big giant wide receiver and um, you know really there's not too many people to compare him to but um, yeah he quit like I don't know how many years he played, but he he didn't play very long. There's this other guy named Andrew Luck who didn't push his luck by playing too long, and uh, he just quit. You know, these guys are just like they're getting smart. You know, the, you got the CTE thing where uh, you get brain actual brain damage, literal brain damage from football, and then you got to worry about blowing out your knee and then taking all those hits uh, and the wear and tear on your body. They're just like. Hey, I'm gonna look out for number one. And, you know, I'm getting the hell out the game with the money. I got millions. I don't need it. There are people that hang on forever, like Jerry Rice played forever, and people that hang on past their prime because that's who they are and that's what they do, and they really either love the game or like uh, don't know what to do without it. You know, it's like. It's so, so much a part of their identity that they don't want to let go of it. Uh, one of my favorite sports guys of all time, uh, Greg Maddox, um, they asked him 
when he was going to retire and he's a pitcher and he said uh, don't worry the batters will let me know and they did <laughs> in other words I'll go out there and suck and then I'll know that I'm done and yeah that's what happened he just pitched until like uh, he wasn't any good anymore so uh, yeah that happens where a guy just hangs on and hangs on and hangs on but baseball a little bit different than other sports unless you're a pitcher with like a bad arm or something like that like basketball you can get some serious injuries and football especially with the CTE thing you can become like a whole different person from getting those concussions there's a guy that got cut from the Ravens named Earl Thomas I believe that's a Hall of Fame level player but he's just been acting out and uh, having like rage issues and the Baltimore Ravens just cut him but it's like that's what happens to people that have too many concussions is they start to develop personality changes and they, they have like a short fuse and anger issues and all kinds of stuff so he's floating around there as a free agent now and um, the Browns were thinking about picking him up but nope, I don't think anybody's going to pick him up because the Ravens are a pretty tightly run ship you know like a really a professional organization they're like you know, they're, they would not cut loose a guy of that caliber unless he has some real issues so it might be too late for that guy maybe that guy should have retired early especially playing the position that he plays which is a defensive back you're doing a lot of hitting and um, you know concussions don't always show up you know uh, yeah you, in other words like you, they have concussion protocol now. This has only been for, I don't know, a couple of years. But this guy was playing when they didn't have concussion protocol. So anytime anybody takes a hit to the head and has a little bit of trouble shaking it off or they get up slow or whatever, they put them in concussion protocol where they like, let's check you out and do some scans on you and we're not going to let you play until we're sure you don't have a concussion. But not too long ago, that wasn't the way it was. So there's lots of guys playing with concussions. And uh, that guy might have been one of them. So, yeah, I mean, how can you blame people for, like, not putting themselves at risk when they've made their money? It's their life. It's their life. You know, we're the ones taking the risk. But anyways, um, yeah, I think I'm drink some water or something I don't, I don't know it's just some more fascinating entertainment for you watch a man drink water Yeah, I, I don't know, man. It's like, uh, philosophically speaking, it's like, I'm kind of like used to this, but very irritated by it as far as like getting sick from being upset emotionally. It's like, I know how this goes. I've been through this before, but it's just, it, it, it's very frustrating. It's stupid. I mean, who ever heard of such a thing? Um, but it's uh, it's a real thing. I assure you. And um, it, I don't know why you would do this, but you can even like research it and find out for yourselves. But I'm like the researcher guy. I'm the guy that looks up pictures of uh, automatic weapons and. Um, PB guns and stuff like I put in the thing I made yesterday. You know, it's like I, I will look into something, I will read about it, I will find out about it, and, um, you know, like, okay, what are all these people upset about? What actually happened? You know, and then I get all the details and find out about it. Not that it makes any difference to the people that are burning things down and um, yelling at people and marching down streets and stuff. 
uh, it's not going to make any difference that I'm sitting at home doing the research and then saying on the internet, well, this is what actually happened because nobody's hearing my voice. So, uh, yeah, by nobody, I, I'm obviously not trying to insult you. I am saying that uh, my viewership is teeny. So, you know, I am just the voice crying in the wilderness of what I see as utter madness that the country has descended into. I mean, the fact that we would be having like riots and uh, the country would be in upheaval over racial uh, tensions yet again, because I've, you know, I've been around a while, so I've seen this a few times, but now, and like that you would see like mostly white people marching in a Black Lives Matter protest the majority of them are often of the crowd you see almost what I see is like a majority of young white people in most of the videos that I see so the fact that I would see that I did I gotta say I didn't see that coming the fact that I would see the country like flipped upside down over racial tensions in the year of our Lord 2020 you know I'm just a little surprised by it, frankly. I'm not sure any of it makes any sense at all. And I do have an interesting fact for you. There was, I, I, I'm going to guesstimate the figure, so bear in my, mind. I'm just shooting from memory here. Um, there were 173 arrests made in the Kenosha riots. Okay. Over 100 of them did not live in Kenosha. They imported for the riots. So, you know, make of that what you will. I told my brother that fact and he said, well, you know, uh, it's probably like people thinking they can get some looting in and people will drive a good distance to get free shit. You know, and the other idea behind it is like, uh, it's a political device. You know, the rioting is a political device that's kind of not like not working where people want Trump out of office it was also kind of funny like uh, I brought up a fact that I had heard that I had found interesting and my brother was like I don't talk about politics you know he's like shutting me down and stuff like I was because he gets really upset you know he gets up really upset about politics he's like I don't watch it I don't follow it I don't talk about it I guess it's a really sore point in the family when uh, politics comes up, like, uh, uh, you know, he's like, he thought I was going to talk about politics. I'm like, no, I just like found this out. And this is like a verified fact. And it just happens to be about a political figure. It's like, I don't even watch American news about politics. And I don't want to talk about politics. And, you know, basically I'm telling him, calm down, take a breath. <laughs> Everything's going to be all right. Yeah, yeah. He he uh, used to follow like politics really closely, and now he just wants absolutely nothing to do with it. To the point where I just brought up the fact um, that certain political figures I'm not going to name were uh, posting bails, bails, posting bail for uh, protesters that were jailed. They had like a fund set up. You know, it's almost like, uh, don't worry, we got your back if you want to carry on in the streets type of thing. And I'm not going to name names, but I just uh, I brought that up. And uh, uh, he was like, right away. I think it was because, I'm going to mention some names. I think it's because he really, really hates Trump. And it was something that made the other side look bad. And he thought I was going to uh, bring him into some discussion involving Trump or that I was going to turn him into a pro-Trump argument. He's like, I don't care about any of that shit. I honestly do not. You know, like, like I said, I don't even watch American news. Uh, I go to Australia. I like to watch Australian news about America. And it's like, uh, yeah, or I'll watch the BBC. Uh, you know, I watch the UK talk about us. I watch other countries talk about us. I don't watch the United States media because there's some, you know, 
so much bias and there's like a clear um, political war being fought through the media as well and I don't know what to make of that but you know how are you, how are you going to get information about what's going on in the world when these people all have agendas that they want to support you know and, uh, they're going to you can lots of times it spills through and you're, you're watching it and uh, you're like I can't believe what I'm seeing you know it's like well, the, the guy will be like doing obvious making obvious debate errors of like talking about what people are thinking and it's like you're talking about what this other side is thinking <laughs> like, like this isn't news dude this is like speculation like tell me like how many pe people got shot tell me like how many buildings got burned down how many arrests were made how many of them were actually from the city that the uh, riot took place in don't tell me about what somebody else is thinking go take your Kreskin magic mind reader act somewhere else so yeah <laughs> I did bail on the whole thing, and uh, no, I am not voting this year. I don't. I do not care. I voted once. It just sets you up for jury duty. Then you have to uh, have an excuse for jury duty. So I'm not, I'm not voting. I'm not ashamed or proud of that fact either. I'm not voting. The one time I voted, I instantly got called in for jury duty, and uh, it's like that's what I get for voting. Is like uh, I voted. Uh, the one time I voted, I voted against um, George W. Bush in 2004 because I did not like us being over in the Middle East uh, in Afghanistan and Iraq. And I didn't like, uh, I thought it was bad for the country and people were getting killed over it. And uh, I had family overseas. I felt personally involved in it. And I also had opened my big mouth and said that I was going to do it, so I did it. I remember like going to the voting place and thinking, "Aha! There's only five people in line," because I've told this before, probably, and I'm boring as shit. And this is just me being insecure. But I'm standing. The voting place was held in this place called the Polish Club, and uh, it was on my street. But there was a voting place, so I could actually walk out stand on my porch and look at the Polish club and see how crowded the voting place was and I'll be like not voting today nope nope still too many people hey man there's hardly any cars out there nobody seems to be there ow <laughs> then I walked down because it's obviously only a few blocks away and I was like ah there's only five people in line ahead of me this ain't gonna take very long two hours later I had no idea how long people take took the vote you know how long they took in that booth you know punching out their little holes and their little cards but when I voted I was tired of standing there for that long I just voted for uh, Aunt non Bush whoever ran against Bush and John Kerry I think I just, I just wanted the warmonger people out of office and uh, voted the guy that was didn't start the war so um, that's all I did I didn't vote for any of the local elections or any of the local things or any of the Senate or anything just one punch mark boom that's it done <laughs> so yeah uh, not voting this year uh, this year this year uh, since I got stuck talking politics uh, Democrats, I'm not like a political guy, obviously, uh, but the Democrats seem to be like shooting themselves in the foot constantly, uh, so uh, I think we're going to have four more years of Trump. If you don't like that, I'm sorry, but I think I'm not a political guy, so I could be wrong, but I, it's just like they seem to be doing everything wrong, and uh yeah, I think it's going to be four more years of Trump. Um, it is what it is. It is. I don't understand why you can't get better candidates. You want this guy out of office, so you put Hillary Clinton up against him the first time. 
Uh, that's a very risky choice. And now you're putting uh, Joe Biden and uh, yeah, I don't know if you watched any clips of that guy, but Mr. Charisma, he ain't. And uh, yeah, that's all I'm gonna say about that. It's like you, there's got you got to come up with better. There's got to be better candidates out there, or more interesting candidates, you know. Um, the, when Barack Obama, you know, young looking, he seems energetic. He's fairly well spoken, uh, educated. Uh, sounds highly educated. I should say they're all educated. I mean, he actually sounded highly educated. You know, he, eh, it's a good candidate to put up. But Hillary Clinton had a baggage association with Bill Clinton. It's also have to bring up the uh, uh, elephant in the room. She's a woman. We've never had a female president before. Uh, we just had a black president. It's like you gotta ease into the woman president thing and pick somebody else that people seem to like better, you know. Um, yeah, I mean, there's other countries that have been run by women, so the United States time would come at, at some point, so you know. Hmm. I, I guess this is very interesting. I don't know. Politics. I, I, don't, I just feel like um, there's so much going on behind the scenes that the average Joe, like myself, has no clue. There's so many promises owed and so many strings being pulled. And um, there's so much money behind the scenes changing hands that, uh, yeah. It's like I heard a uh, I think it was Bill Hicks, uh, a political comedian. Uh, that wasn't exactly one of my favorite comedians, but a fairly bright guy that he just said that, like, uh, there's your puppet over here, and you got two puppets, but you got one hand controlling both of them. And you feel like that hand is like a bunch of the rich, the elite, you know. And it's just a puppet show put on for our entertainment. And that what's really going on behind the scenes is uh, we have, as average people, have no idea. And it's just a show put on um, for us uh, about promises made behind the scenes. Like, hey man, if you kick me this money, I'll vote for this or I'll do this. And it's all like stuff that we have no knowledge of. It comes out later. You know, like uh, in the past with Reagan and Iran Contra and all that stuff. Um, it it what well, that came out while he was in office, but I mean it it it, it generally doesn't come out at the time it happens. The, the Watergate was like a rare instance, and uh, um, I don't. I don't think there's been a successful impeachment of a president. Why the hell am I talking about politics when I said I don't want to talk about politics? I don't know. Uh, but yeah, there's never been a successful impeachment of a president, I don't think. Because Nixon uh, resigned. That's not an... Uh, that's not like a successful impeachment removal. Impeachment actually doesn't mean kicking the guy out of office. Impeachment means like, you know, they impeached Clinton, but he's still got to be president. And there's a step after and it has to be a successful impeach, you know, impeachment. Impeachment just means like, we're going to try to kick you out. We're going to put you up for a trial. Um, that doesn't mean, you, you know, Clinton had his eight years, but he got impeached. Impeached? He got impeached you know, I did not have sex with that woman, you know. What do you mean by is, is the one that everybody always remembers, you know. He wanted the definition of is. <laughs> well, is is a state of being verb, referring to something's existence, sir. And since you are a Rhodes Scholar, 
the fact that you are asking me what I mean by is 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 very puzzling <laughs> yeah. so it's all a weird game to me played by sociopaths that I want no part of and like uh, uh, I could see like voting on a local level that would make sense but voting like for president I mean unless there's wars involved and I'm not particularly uh, fond of like I didn't really have I don't really follow it that close to say it doesn't really matter who I'm fond of or who I'm not fond of but on a political level I could see that you know because um, my brother-in-law wizard was like a serious political voter guy right so he would make complaints to local government and local government there's so few votes like every vote literally counts on a local level so he would get like personal letters from uh our uh, councilman, uh, the guy's name was Scott Oslager, I think. Anyways, he showed me the letter, man, and it's like it was a personal letter to him, you know, and it was like signed by him and uh, addressing his concern about something. And it's like, uh, yeah, this doesn't look like a form letter. It looked like he either had his secretary write this and then he signed off on it, and it's actually got a response, you know. You think you're going to write the President of the United States and get a response? It's not going to happen. You know, he probably he, he tweets all the time, but he probably wouldn't respond to a tweet of yours because there's like billions of people doing it. Or you get the picture, a lot of people. But on a local level, say, guys can lose elections by like five, six votes, you know, if you want to be a councilman or something like that. So you matter to them. <laughs> And that's why, like, you know, this guy voted for me. <laughs> this is a vote that I can win, you know. Yeah. It, it depends on the size of your town, but really, like, elections can be lost by, like, 15 votes. So, um, yeah, I could see voting on a local level because I've seen that in action where um, you really matter to them because they need your damn vote because there's only going to be, like, so many thousands of people voting and it actually make your vote actually counts big time enough for them to take the time out to address your concern I don't remember what his concern was or what he was writing as a congressperson about because as usual I'm never prepared for this these things probably wouldn't be rambling about like politics for a half an hour to kill time um, and I, I I don't know like uh, yeah I don't have a whole lot to talk about. What can I say? Uh, let me put on my glasses and check what time it is. Since uh, I got 355. See, now she's supposed to be here at 330. Uh, ordinarily, but they might have already changed the time on me. On me. They might have called and uh, canceled on a phone that's dead or something. I don't know. You know, sometimes they don't even tell me when they change the time. She just shows up here like an hour early, an hour late. Uh, I have to call. Like most days I'll call in the morning and I'll say like when am I on the schedule for today. And they'll tell me and I'll be like, oh, okay. And I did that, that on uh, today's Thursday. I did that on Tuesday. And I was like, oh, shit, I got less time than I'm uh, expecting to get my cards ready so I can have her take them to the post office and mail them. Uh, yeah. So, uh, but today I don't have literally anything going on. And I'm literally just sitting here wasting time and uh, can't even eat. And um, I'm just sitting around waiting. I've already got like a little bag of clothes ready for a little bag so she doesn't have to carry. I'm such a sweetheart. I'm telling you, I'm a lovely human being. So she doesn't have to carry this big, heavy, gigantic, economy sized uh, um, detergent. I like poured a cap of detergent into a little plastic bag and sealed it up and put it in another bag and threw it in my bag of clothes. Just because I'm just that nice and uh, thoughtful of a person. And uh, I got my uh, quarters and stuff. And all the laundry is ready to go. All I got to do is answer the door and tell her that I want her to go to the laundry. That's all that I'm doing is waiting for my stomach to stop screaming at me. 
and uh, it's like waiting for CRPS to get over the fact that uh, I could get suspended off of eBay and um, probably not going to happen but it's a possibility I was waiting to uh, go back to my normal level of dysfunction and misery I mean that's all anybody can ask for right it's like sir can I please just have my normal level of dysfunction and misery and not this extra helping that you've given me thank you uh, signed a concerned citizen yeah um, it's, like, it's like if I had the best tasting food something that I really love out there right now I don't want to eat it it's like how my stomach is right now when it gets like this it's like I don't want to eat and I can still drink water and stuff uh, but food it would be like a chore I'll drink the rest of my water I figure like you know I'm sure that the uh, one or two remaining people here uh, like I said you can always click out click off the video I'm never offended by anything really as far as uh, uh, viewership I just you know there's a lot of options right there on the side of your screen of something interesting besides watching uh, me but I try I try to be good company and I try to uh, be entertaining and keep my ums to a minimum I try to string together my words in a mellifluous and concise pattern and still convey the overall meaning therein so I, I do my best in other words I mean I didn't mean to talk about all that political mess that just sort of happened I just think it's funny that my brother is like uh, uh, now he's a politophobe like he's so afraid of politics I mentioned just a random fact you know I'd be like did you know that uh, Barack Obama played high school basketball and was on the varsity squad and just like random a fact about a political guy and he's like oh no no not politics no and he breaks out the garlic and the cross and uh, the wooden stake and shit it's like no it's like uh I gotta use that or, or a Superman reference, you know, like I was bringing out a box of kryptonite that I had previously concealed in, in lead. You know, but it's like he can't handle it no more. Uh, he used to follow politics like, really closely. It's 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 weird. It's like he can't handle it no more. It's like it makes him. I think he, I think he knows that it makes him too angry. And, uh, and too upset and uh, yeah I don't know I guess I could ask him but then I would be asking him about politics and I'm not allowed to do that all I said was like yeah man I'm not going to talk about politics please back away slowly or no I'm backing away slowly please take some deep breaths Everything's cool. You know, we won't talk about anything emotional or politics or anything. You don't have to elaborate on any of my issues or anything like that. We can talk about TV and movies and safe topics. Um, unless it's something to do with you and then we will talk about you. And I will uh, be altruistic and listen to you and ask you questions about your various issues like how long has your side been hurting did you do anything in particular that you remember where you felt like a sharp pain uh, how long have you been having a problem with your neck it's like why do you feel sad there are like the various questions that I don't get asked uh, yeah what is you know it's just like talking to a wall an emotional wall if you'll acknowledge that something happened but it's like a wall 
It's got that, you know, I actually started looking at the wall while I was talking to it. I had that thought, like, mm -hmm. I'm not going to be talking to the wall right now. You know, it's quiet. doesn't interrupt, but it's like he's waiting for me to be over. It's like, it's like he's in church waiting to be, like, when you're a little kid in church and you just want it to be over. You're just waiting for that final oh man to get the hell out of there you know you just wait for me to wait for the noise that's coming off of his phone to stop and that might be just my twisted perception i don't know it's funny that i don't remember the catholic mass and all the times that i went to the catholic mass i remember very little about it so i don't remember exactly how it ended i think it ends with music there's like music as you leave. I seem to have images of that. You have to understand I stopped going to church when I was 15 years old. I just told my mom I didn't want to go to church anymore. She was like, that's cool. Uh, she didn't really seem, didn't seem like a big deal to her. Um, so it's been uh, 37 years since I've been to a Catholic Mass. But up until the time I was 15, I went to a Catholic school. We would go to Mass sometimes in school. You know, um, we went to like in the church so much, so much that one time a kid broke into the uh, Eucharist box that to keep the little wafers. You know, I don't know if they still do that. The wafer thing, the but this is the body of Christ thing, and he started eating them. Like you know, he started eating them like they were cookies. Uh, and uh, why he would do that, I don't know, but he said they tasted bad. And I was like, well, of course, you've tasted them before. Why did you even do that? I wanted to get extra holy and eat all these wafers. You know, I, don't know. I wanted to be like, uh, be like a Super Mario power-up. I, I wish I could make a video game reference, but I don't like video games. I was like, yeah, well, I'm powering up. I'm eating like extra health boxes. You people probably, the, the three people that are watching this probably don't play video games either. But yeah, I got like a... Uh, a video game thing going on in my head. No, I can't get rid of it. It's like, I have a kid eating a whole bunch of Eucharist thinking like, now, you know, I'll be unstoppable. <laughs> I will be super holy. I don't know. But, um, I have very few memories of that, but I do remember one time, like, um, only for special occasions. Um, it's very unsanitary, by the way, but that you'd have the body of Christ and then you'd have the blood of Christ, which is wine. They would, they'd always do the body of Christ, but you didn't get the blood except for on uh, special occasions. But it would be like watered down wine that the police, the police, the priest blessed. So, you know, I'm like five rows back in the church and whatever. And I go up and I get my sip of wine and I sit back and I can almost see the kid's face. But he turns to the other kid and he's in the third row and I'm in the fifth row. And he's like, I backwashed in the wine. <laughs> you bastard. <laughs> you spit it back. Backwashed in the wine. You know what backwashed is. I don't know why I felt the need to explain. It was like there was somebody scratching their head like, what does he mean by backwashed? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, those are the kids that don't really belong in church, you know. Um, they're really not buying into the whole thing anyway, so... You know, they really don't need to be there. Uh, it's not that, uh, yeah, the kids that are breaking in and eating the wafers, uh, breaking into the rectory in the church where they store the box of uh, you, you unblessed Eucharist and chomping them down like uh, cookies. And the kids that backwash in the wine are probably the ones like me at 15 that shouldn't be going to church, you know. And I always saw, I never liked it. And then you, they drop down the kneeler thing, and you kneel for part of the Catholic ch uh, Church thing. And um, a lot of it is like, um, may the Lord be with you, and also with you. See, it's coming back to me. Uh, lift up your heart. We lift them up unto the Lord. And there would be like the priest would say, it's like the call and response thing. And then like, there was always the homily, I think it's called where it's like, it was a break in the action. Where like, they had the rituals and the prayers everybody said together, they were all like a set pattern. But then the priest would give his like, um, sermon. 
don't know. I, I said homily. I don't know if that's the same thing. Uh, but he would give his sermon, and that would be his little speech that he worked on that was supposed to inspire and stuff. And, uh, you know, lots of times he would, like, quote, uh, like, one line of scripture and then talk about it for, like, a half an hour. Uh, those I don't remember at all. I just remember this. He sat some of the times. He stood some of the times. I think you had to stand up when you were doing the singing parts. They'd want you to sing a hymn. You'd sat down when you were uh, doing the, of course, during the sermon. And then you kneeled for part of it, but I don't know why. Um, I think the kneeling part was so you could be in the prayer position. I don't know. I don't remember. Yeah, I, I really don't remember. Um, it, it'll come back to me probably later on when I'm off camera. And I'll be like, uh, yeah, this is how this always goes. Maybe I should do a couple of takes and give you your money's worth. I mean, give you that quality entertainment, that polished, like, uh, instead of like watching a guy wade through his um, faded memories from when he was a kid. Uh, but I backwashed it. Why? It was pretty good. Um, I don't know why they broke out. They only broke out the wine sometimes. It was very unsanitary because you're all drinking from the same cup. You know, like I said, that, that kid could have had like coronavirus. You know, I know it's new. They even call it Nobel or Nobel or whatever, or some word meaning new. Because uh, it's. It's a fancy new coronavirus, but you know, say the kid had the flu or something like that, or just you didn't even back washing the wine. But say somebody has the flu and they're the first guy to drink out of the same cup, and everybody in the church is exposed to the flu. You know, and he's going to church specifically with the flu to get cured from the flu. But what really happens is he's just giving it to everybody else because misery loves company. He's like, oh, you're sick too. I feel better. You know what? Going to church didn't make me feel better. So, yeah. Um, I suppose I was I was tempted to check the time again. I suppose it kind of defeats the purpose of me helping you kill time on here, talking. If I keep checking the time, it's like watching a movie. Have you, have you ever like watched a movie, and you're like, you know, you're really not into it if you're like checking the time. <laughs> like, hey, how long have I been watching this movie? So I was talking about this really great movie uh, called Blue Ruin, which um, sometimes you watch a movie and you're just like in it. You're just totally absorbed in the movie. It's like uh, you're like living the movie. And like I had that experience with this movie, but I walked into it and I had no idea what it was or what it was about. And it's kind of an obscure movie. It's just called Blue Ruin. And... Um, I'm not going to tell you anything about it in case you want to watch it because it's much better if you don't know uh, what's going on in the movie. But, um, yeah. And then there's other movies. There's that, movies like that where, like, the time is suspended. You're just, like, you're just, your attention is, you're just wrapped up in this movie. And it's like, those are special because there's not too many movies that can do that and make you like forget time but if there's actually movies where you're looking at the time or you're playing with the computer or you're thinking about something other than the movie <laughs> it's probably not a top-notch movie you know it's not serving the purpose and I'm saying this because it me uh, referencing how long I have been on here not helpful to my overall content it's not about quality uh, it's about you know distraction and, uh, since I can't do any fancy tricks I used to be able to do this have independent eye movement I don't know if that came out or not, but it gives me a headache to do that. Like almost an instant headache. But I used to be able to do that like really well. Like 
I don't know, I don't know if I accomplished it or not. It makes my head hurt to do anyways. Um, yeah, like I remember one time flaring my nostrils, which most people can do, I think. It's probably not even showing up since I'm so far away from you, which, you know, I don't want you, you know, I don't want, you, you shouldn't have to smell my, my uh, morning breath anyways, so I don't want to get that close to you. But uh, I was flaring my nostrils, and there was like uh my nephew, Jeffrey, uh, was, and he was like, are you doing that? <laughs> I was laughing my ass off. No, man, I'm not the one moving my own nostrils. <laughs> he was serious. He was just like a three-year-old or something like that. Never saw anybody do it before. Cause he asked me, are you doing that? Uh, it's the wind. <laughs> I hear there's people that could wiggle their ears, too. And uh, I have no idea what function that would serve, but I like the thing where you can lift up one eyebrow, but I can't, I can only do that sometimes. Where you, you quizzically do the Spock thing and you lift up one eyebrow. I think that's useful. You know, I think that's a cool thing to be able to do. I should practice that more. Nobody really, you know, you're not really conveying any meaning by making your eyes go one way and keeping one eye crossed and making an eye go over here. It's not useful. They probably didn't even show up on camera. But I don't care if I'm an idiot. Because yesterday I proved I was an idiot by um, turning myself in for a crime. So, yeah. Yeah. Um. Hmm. What would you like to talk about? Do you have anything in particular? Hmm. We could talk about benzodiazepines. Uh, I got a guy right now that's... I've been talking to that's like uh, he seems to want to take benzodiazepines and uh, I don't know how I don't want to do the forbidden fruit thing and say thou shalt not take thou shalt not eat it of the tree of the benzodiazepine you know because you know, I don't know how to convince somebody that uh, being chemically dependent on something is a bad idea or, you know, like, maybe show them a video of somebody with akathisia, I think is the term, where, you know, you're shaking. Or bring up the fact that, uh, I don't know, it, the withdrawals could kill you, or, you know, but it's like, uh, you don't want those things. You know, you, I'm not talking about the symptoms. I mean, you don't even want the possibility of those th symptoms, but you don't want to be chemically dependent on anything because of the withdrawal and they're not good for you even if you have them uh, but the other thing is is like it's not even a good thing to dabble with because uh, chemical dependence can happen like in three weeks you know like I was talking to my case manager that I used this information to blackmail her with and she has uh, Xanax and she would takes it occasionally and she was saying I will take it sometimes for three or four days straight and then when I don't have it I notice the difference so, and then like that by blackmailing her I mean that one day she was wanting to yell at the aid workers that the aid worker that was saying that she told me that they weren't supposed to be doing work. She was wanting to yell at the aid worker for not doing work. And uh, I could not dissuade her until I said, uh, yeah, you know, I've just been having a lot of Xanax uh, issues, you know, like with that edginess you get. You know what I'm talking, we talked about this before. And suddenly, you know, she's like, well, how about tomorrow? Tomorrow will be okay. And I changed her tune completely. It was like, you're being a bad girl. You're not supposed to be taking drugs. Uh, and you told me some stuff you probably should have told me. I think I can stop with the sing songy voice thing now. But yeah, that's what kind of one of the things that irritated me about this woman that I'm still waiting on. I'm about to give up on. Um, 
call the agency is uh like I, that was her first time coming here and I protected her from an ass chewing for not doing housework because I was like I told her that and I explained to her like I didn't want her yelling at you for something that other people didn't do and then she ends up needing yelled at but you can't have them like yelled at for future crimes <laughs> in retrospect I should just let her head went ahead and uh, turned my case manager she might have had like a uh, on Xanax day where you're all edgy and mean too it might have really got ugly just like I bet you she would have done my housework then and just turned her loose on her um, and like I, I just didn't want to see that I didn't want to be a part of that I felt like it was undeserved it's like this is the first time they, uh, this person was coming here but uh, my case worker for our case manager for care sources was like a rabid wolverine you know she was all she was like look I gotta come over there anywhere I want to talk to the people I want to be there I want to see that they're doing their job we're the people that hired them you know and uh, they answer to us you know she was like that and I was like man I don't need no drama man I don't want no drama so I found a way out of it but um, as far as like dissuading somebody from taking certain drugs I mean I don't know I, I don't know how you do that I mean uh, it's not a pain kill, killer I mean, it just puts it just messes your head up so maybe you're like uh, less aware of the pain that's not really a painkiller I don't think you know I don't think that's the purpose of like a painkiller maybe it is maybe that's you you know maybe that's how painkillers work it's like they just dull your awareness of the pain and that's what I don't I don't even know how painkillers work now that I'm thinking about it I want to research something I mean do they just change your awareness of the pain and the pain is still running amok I mean, it's just a matter of your changing your uh, mental state or do they actually do something in the area that the pain is coming from like when you get a headache and you take aspirin why does aspirin work why don't I know these things why am I looking up like MK 177 tactical uh, air rifles over um, riots and stuff and not looking up these this type of information. Hmm. Aspirin doesn't change the, your mental state and your awareness of things, so it must have a direct impact on pain somehow. But then you get into chemistry, and I don't know about you, but I, I can't deal with no chemistry, man. Let me start talking about chemistry. I did not take chemistry in school. I don't understand it. You know, I start talking about that. I mean, I I struggled through it when I was finding out about how benzodiazepines work and how like it's part of the chemical process and that how GABA can be in your system and the actual uh, chemical that causes the calming feeling is not GABA. It is uh, what your GABA receptors take the GABA and they and releases this um, chemical which has a lot of syllables in it and begins with chlora. Um, anyways, I studied that a little bit. I was like, man, that was hard. So I don't want to get into like any kind of chemistry things. I feel about chemistry this, the same way that my brother feels about politics. I'm scared of it. Don't even want to talk about it. <laughs> I just, uh, it's just not my thing, you know. I'm, uh, I am a uh, ninth grade dropout. Never had no chemistry class. I can follow some of what they're saying. I, like I said, I studied enough to understand um, the GABA uptake process, the receptor thing. Uh, how benzodiazepines bond to the 
uh, receptors. The receptors become dependent on the benzodiazepine and they do not function properly and then you feel like jumping out of the window. That part of it I got. Uh, but that's like a common misconception that I've heard people spout on the internet. It's like the GABA is the calming. No. The GABA is not the calming uh, substance. It is something that goes to a receptor and then the receptor releases this other substance which I will look up and I will write down for you in the uh, um, description box but this is getting ridiculous now waiting on this woman that's never ever gonna come I mean we had a date and she's just standing me up it's just horrible I mean, I'm such a nice guy and a sweetheart too and I, buy, I got a, a box of chocolates I was gonna buy her dinner and everything I'm all dressed up she's not even showing up it's horrible yeah man she's uh an hour late so I guess she ain't coming if she's coming I don't know and I'm gonna get off of here and uh yeah this is about the length of a movie I'll, rem I'll try to refrain from doing that like um, being self-conscious and reminding uh, you and me how long I've been talking because it defeats the purpose of my long-winded uh, boisterous voluminous incredibly total blank nothing no more fancy words they're done that's that's a sign to get off of there uh, nope, still nothing. I was going to try to save it. Oh, no saving it. Oh, man. I've noticed that it cuts a shade more when I get older. That's another, like, bad thing about getting older. Like, I still can't grow a decent beard, but I seem to have to shave more often. Like, what's, what's that about? It used to be cool, man. I was like, I was the envy of all the 20-year-olds in my peer group because I only had to shave, like, once every three or four days. And then I really wasn't a necessity but, I mean I was like clean shaven for like two days after I shaved before the stubble come in and now it's not like that at all so that's another benefit of old age is uh, you get to have the fun of dealing with this more often mm. yeah. Uh, yeah it's just it's just a shame that um, I've been just sitting here, uh, killing time. There's something, somebody that's apparently never going to show up. Yeah, I was waiting for a feeling that never ever came. Words to you are lies, darling. In my wildest dreams, I never had a clue. But it's time you heard the news. Ooze. I'm not trying to sing a woman's song. I'm going to harden my heart. I'm going to swallow my tears. I'm going to turn and leave you. Remember that song? Uh, it's Quarter Flash. Harden my heart. It's uh, back when uh, MTV came out. They used to have a video for it. Uh, yeah. I think I've been on here too long. Goodbye.